My name is Adas Dvori Sobol, um, and I was also asked to uh, give a little bit background about myself. So uh, you can see from my accent, I'm from Israel. Um, um, I graduated from Tel, Tel Aviv University with a master's degree in biochemistry and a PhD focusing on gene therapy approach to target uh, cancer cells. Um, I moved to the US in uh, 2006. Um, and I met Jeffrey Glenn, and he got me very excited about uh, hepatitis C. Uh, I did my postdoc in his lab, uh, focusing on NS4B and the new approaches of uh, inhibiting uh, hepatitis C. Um, I joined the clinical virology team uh, in Gilead Sciences at the end of uh, 2010, and. Uh, uh, my major work is uh, um, trying to uh, characterize our compound resistance um, of uh, compounds in uh, development. And today I'm going to uh, tell you about um, a resistance analysis we did for uh, our uh, approved uh, drugs, um, Sofosovir and Arvani. I will, I will start with the introduction to hepatitis C. I will tell you about uh, our Gilead HCV drug development, and then I will tell you about uh, two variants we observed in our uh, studies with sofosovir, and then uh, I will uh, tell you about a uh, baseline and post-baseline uh, resistance analysis for uh, our uh, Orvani in phase two, three studies. So this is the global prevalence of uh, hepatitis C infection. About 2% of the world population estimated to have chronic hepatitis C, which is uh, about uh, 150 uh, million people uh, wo uh, worldwide. Uh, high prevalence can be found in uh, Asia and Africa, uh, specifically Egypt, Pakistan, and China have the highest rates of uh, chronic hepatitis C infection due to lack, lack of uh, standard precautions. In the U.S., about uh, 3.2 million uh, people have a chronic uh, infection, and about uh, uh, 12,000 people uh, died from uh, advanced liver disease that are caused because of a uh, chronic uh, infection. In the uh, EU, 5.5 to uh, 6.5 million are infected, and this is about 1 to 1.3 percent of the population. HCV genome is very diverse. There are six major uh, genotypes and uh, multiple uh, subtypes. Uh, for example, gen uh, genotype 6 has about 24 subtypes, genotype 4 has about uh, um, 17 subtypes. The genetic diversity is large. There is 30 percent difference between the genotypes and 15 to 20 percent between the uh, subtypes. Genotypic diversity has profound effects on therapy. In the U.S., as I mentioned, about 3.2 million uh, people are infected. Uh, the major genotype is genotype 1, um, and it's about 78%. Uh, uh, genotype 1 has two, sub, two major subtypes, uh, and about 52% uh, um, are infected with genotype 1A, and 27% uh, are infected with genotype 1B. This is uh, um, followed with uh, genotype 2, which accounts for 30%, and the uh, genotype 3, 6%, and then genotype 4, 5, and 6 are uh, more rare in uh, the US. HCV belongs to the flavivirus family. It is enveloped <coughs> positive uh, single stranded uh, RNA. It has a, a, a 9.6 uh, KB uh, genome, and uh, the, gen the genome is composed from a 5, a five prime UTR long open uh, reading frame encoding a um, polyprotein of about uh, 3,000 amino acids and a uh, 3 prime uh, UTR. The, long, the um, polyprotein is then cleaved and processed by host and viral uh, proteases into structural uh, proteins, core, E1, uh, E2, and seven non-structural uh, proteins, including the NS3 protease helicase and uh, NS5B polymerase. The HCV uh, uh, life cycles begin with the uh, uh, interaction and binding of the virons to hepatocytes. Uh, this uh, includes association with a family of uh, uh, receptors, in, including uh, oclodin, clodin, CDID1, 
uh, and LDL uh, receptors and few others. Then there is internalization and um, via endocytosis process, release of the uh, RNA, translation uh, via uh, iris, uh, entry ribosome uh, uh, entry site, um, um, polyprotein uh, processing and cleavage, uh, replication via a negative strand RNA that occurs on the membranous web, and then maturation and assembly uh, on lipid droplets and release of uh, mature virons. Unlike HIV and, the HIV, uh, and, HIV, and HBV, HCV can be cured. Uh, one term that is commonly used is the SVR. SVR is the sustained virologic response, which is the indication of the clearance of the virus from the blood. Um, H uh, SVR can be achieved after 12 weeks, 12 weeks post-treatment. However, SVR24 is commonly uh, used. There is a high concordance between SVR12 and SVR24. There are four key goals of uh, HCV drugs in development. First, we are looking on high, highly efficacious um, regimen. We are looking for more than 90% uh, cure. The regimen should be well tolerated with low rates of adverse events, and uh, we are looking also in regimen with uh, minimal drug uh, interactions. For example, we have uh, H uh, HIV, HCV co-infected patients. We don't uh, want any drug-drug interactions between the HIV and HCV drugs. We are looking on a, a convenient regimen with short duration and simple uh, dosing. Specifically, Gilead is looking for a sig signal tablet uh, regimen, a, a simple dosing to avoid non-compliance uh, of the patients. And we are looking for a regimen that will be effective in a broad, uh, in broad population, pangenotypic that can cover all the hepatitis C uh, genotypes and can also be a, a treated, um, treated special population. We have in our studies um, treatment experience uh, patients, um, uh, pediatric patients, patients with uh, um, advanced liver disease, diseases uh, pre and post uh, transplant uh, uh, patients. And also I mentioned the HIV, um, uh, HBV, uh, HCV co-infected uh, patients. So right now we have uh, four uh, drugs in uh, development. We have uh, sofosovir, that is uh, our nucleotide NS5B inhibitor. We have uh, uh, two NS5A inhibitors, uh, ledipasvir, which I'm going to mention in the next slide. And we have the 5816, is our uh, pangenotypic NS5A inhibitor. And we have the 9857, which is our new pangenotypic NS3 protease inhibitor. And the uh, Gilead's uh, goal is to lead the field of HCV for development pangenotypic signal tablet uh, regimens. So ledipasvir is our NS5A inhibitor. It has picomolar uh, activity against genotype type 1 and 1B, 1A and 1B. It is effective against uh, NS5B variants. Sofosovir is our uh, nucleotide NS5B inhibitor. It has potent activity against genotype type 1 to 6, and it has, has high barrier to resistance. Ledipasvir and sofosovir combine together to a fixed dose combination tablet, uh, Arvani. So the, uh, in the first uh, uh, portion of the talk, I will, talk uh, I will tell you about our, uh, two variants, L159F and V321A, which observed in studies with uh, sofosovir. So uh, S282T, the NS5B uh, mutation, exhibits reduced susceptibility to sofosovir, and it is selected by sofosovir in vitro across genotype 1 to 6. S282T was not detected in any patients at baseline or virologic failure in phase 3 studies. However, it was observed infrequently in other studies. Other treatment uh, emergent variants and, uh, identified by population sequencing in the sofosovir phase three studies, and that include the L159F, which is observed in six out of uh, 300 virologic failures, and V321A, which was observed in five out of 300 virologic failures. And I would like to mention again, these variants were not observed in our in vitro resistance selections. 
This is the NS5B crystal structure with uh, sofosovir, and you can see um, um, S282 is uh, close to sofosovir in the active site. L159 is also close to uh, S282 and potentially interact. Uh, and V321 is, uh, close in is, close, is in close um, uh, proximity to the active site. Um, so this is in vitro data. You can see that all uh, variants, L159F, V321A, and S282T, um, have low rec replication capacity. However, S282T has reduced susceptibility to sofosvovir. But L159F and V321A does not have any change in susceptibility to sofosvovir. The objectives were to evaluate the emergence of NS5B uh, substitutions L159F and V321A by deep sequencing at the time of virologic failures in the sofosvovir studies and the deepest sofosvovir studies. There were eight uh, sofosvovir studies that included in the analysis and five ledipasvir sofosvovir studies that uh, included in the analysis. L159F and V321A emergence was evaluated in 408 virologic failures from uh, these studies using deep sequencing of NS5B with 1% cutoff. And these are the results. Um, overall, we had a, a baseline sequencing uh, from 1,817 1, uh, subjects. 353 subjects had virologic failures. From these 353, 53 had the L159F, sorry, and which is 15%. And 17 uh, patients of the 53 had V321A uh, variant, which is 5%. If we just look at the um, uh, virologic failures from the sofosovir studies, you can see that majority of the patients that had L159F and V321A were, were from the sofosovir plus ribavirin studies. And only two patients from sofosovir plus ribavirin plus peg interferon studies had L159F, and V321A was not detected in any of the subjects in the sofosovir, ribavirin, and uh, peg interferon studies. In the ledipasvir sofosovir studies, there were 1,807 subjects with baseline sequencing. Um, 50 of, uh, of the subjects had virologic failure, and only uh, uh, and one subject had uh, uh, L159F, and another subject had V321A at virologic uh, failure. The levels of uh, L159F and V321A uh, that uh, detected in uh, uh, the soft studies um, showed uh, um, as minor variants with less than 15% of the viral uh, population. Um, L1, in addition, L159F and V321A declined in frequency in most of the patients between 4 to 20 weeks post the initial detection. 21 patients um, that had virologic failures in these studies uh, were retreated with either soft peg interferon riba or 24 weeks of uh, um, soft and the uh, ribavirin. And 16 out of the 21 subjects achieved SVR. The five subjects that uh, experienced virologic relapse had L159F at the virologic failure of the parent study, but the variant was no longer detected at the time of the retreatment failure. One of these uh, five subjects, uh, that add V321A at virologic failure, this variant remained detectable but was not enriched. So this is our hypothesis for the mechanism um, for uh, L159F and V321A. Um, so at baseline, we have the Y type and the minor population of the uh, mutant because of uh, um, a low replication capacity. 
then during a sofosbuvir treatment, both the white type and the, vi and the um, mutants be become undetectable. And then during time, the mutant will uh, grow because of low susceptibility to sofosbuvir. Then post-treatment, the wild type will quickly grow because of the eye replication capacity. So in conclusion, uh, deep sequencing detected the L159F in 15% of the virologic failures and V321A in 5% of the virologic uh, failures. Uh, intensification of sofosbuvir treatment with PEG interferon or ledipasvir reduced the emergence of these uh, variants. The treatment emergent L159F and V321A did not impact the retreatment outcome with sofosbuvir, ribavirin, and PEG interferon. And the clinical significance of these variants remains to be determined, and we are still follow these variants in our studies. And now I'm moving on to the resistance profile uh, of the dipasvir sofosbuvir harvani Our objectives were to determine the baseline prevalence and the effects of resistance associated variants on virologic response to the dipasvir sofosbuvir in phase two three, stud, uh, two, three studies. We specifically looked on the NS5A inhibitor variants, NS5B nucleotide inhibitor variants, and NS3 uh, protease inhibitor variants. A second objective was to characterize any NS5A or NS5B uh, that observed in patients who experience virologic failure. And this is the phase two, three studies designed. There were five studies that included in the analysis. All subjects had genotype 1 infection. Majority of the subjects had genotype 1A infection. There were treatment naive and treatment experienced subjects. Treatment experienced subjects included uh, patients who prior treated with PEG interferon riba and patients who were prior treated with PEG interferon riba and uh, uh, protease inhibitors. Ledipasvir and sofosbuvir administered for, uh, with or without uh, ribavirin for 8, 12, or 24 weeks. And our endpoint for the analysis um, was the SVR12. NS5A was deep sequence for all subjects that uh, enrolled in the studies. NS5B, a deep sequence for majority of the subjects, and NS3, deep sequence for the treatment experience subjects. And uh, um, NS5A, NS5B were deep sequence for all subjects who did not achieve SVR12. And I will start with the baseline resistance analysis. Overall, 16% of the subjects had NS5A variants at baseline. And from this uh, um, 16%, 93% achieved SVR12. 84% did not have any variants at baseline and 97% achieved SVR12. We also subgrouped this uh, analysis by the uh, subtype, um, the genotype 1A and subtype 1B. And you can see that the prevalence of the NS5A variants for both subtypes was very similar. It was 16. For, gen for subjects with genotype 1A uh, infection and variants in baseline, 92% achieved SVR12. And for subjects with genotype 1B uh, infection and variants at baseline, 95% achieved SVR12. Um, the NS5A variants classified by the level of resistance to Ladipasvir. We specifically looked on variants that have less than 100-fold resistance to Ladipasvir and variants that had more than 100-fold resistance to Ladipasvir. And here are the results for the treatment naive subject. You can see on the left that there was a slight reduction for subjects who had NS5A variants that confer more than 100 fold resistance to Ladipasvir and uh, received uh, eight weeks of treatment compared to subjects that did not have variants at baseline or subjects that had variants at baseline that confer less than 100 fold re resistance to Ladipasvir. There were no significant differences for subjects who uh, received treatment of 12 and 24 weeks uh, in the different groups of uh, um, more than 100-fold, less than 100-fold, or no variants at all. 
And these are the results for the treatment experience subjects. There was a reduction in SVR12 for treatment experience subjects who had variants that confer more than 100-fold resistance to ledipasvir. And no differences between um, subjects who did not have a variants at baseline or no a variants at all that received treatment for 12 weeks. Also, all the, uh, sub, all the treatment experience subjects who had variants uh, at baseline and received treatment of 24 weeks achieved SVR 12. We also looked at the um, uh, association of baseline NS5A, NS5B nucleotide inhibitor variants with treatment response. 1,692 um, um, patients were deep sequenced at baseline. And from uh, these patients, 43 patients had NS5B variants at baseline. And all 43 patients with NS5B nucleotide inhibitor <coughs> variants achieved SVR12. And then for subjects with NS3 protease inhibitor variants, we grouped them for subjects superior treated with PEG uh, interferon riba and subjects who prior t uh, treated with PEG interferon riba and protease inhibitor. And you can see that 54 subjects uh, who prior treated with protease inhibitor at NS3 variants at baseline compared to only 10% for subjects who did not treat it with um, protease inhibitors. Uh, there were no significant differences between the SVR12, the treatment outcome for these two groups. And then for the resistance analysis for the patients with virologic failure. Overall, there were 51 subjects out of uh, 2,144 subjects that did not achieve SVR12 in the phase 2 3 studies. And from these 51 subjects that did not achieve SVR12, only 22 had NS5A variants at baseline. However, a majority of the patients had NS5A variants at virologic failure. NS5B variants were not detected in any of the uh, virologic failures at baseline, and there were three subjects with NS5B uh, nucleotide inhibitor variants at virologic failure. One subject at the S282T variant with NS5A variant, another subject at the L159F and, y93 with, and NS5A variant, and another subject at the V321A without NS5A variant. We also looked at the uh, specific variants at virologic failure by the subtypes. And you can see on the left, we have this, the um, uh, genotype 1A subjects with virologic failure. And variants observed in multiple positions. And um, uh, also, there were multiple substitutions. In John type 1B, patients with virologic failures, variants observed in only two positions. In conclusions, ledipasvir sofosbuvir shows high efficacy among uh, John type 1A and 1B infected subjects, regardless of the presence of HCV variants. More than 92% uh, of subjects with NS5A variants achieved SVR12. There was slight reduction in the uh, SVR in subjects with highest level of ledipasvir resistance uh, for treatment naive subjects in the eight week arm and uh, for uh, treatment experience subjects uh, with a 12 week uh, therapy. So, fosfosvir containing regimens continue to demonstrate high barrier of resistance to sofosfosvir. The percentage of virologic failure in these studies was only 2.4%. Um, and only one subject at the S282T. Virologic failure was associated with detection of NS5A variants in majority of the subject. And uh, I would just uh, like to end with the, um, the Gilead's waves of uh, HCV drug development. So in wave one, we have a sofosovir or Sovaldi that was approved at the end of uh, 2013. This was the first uh, um, interferon-free regimen for gen type 2 and 3. It was also the first uh, uh, regimen with the addition of interferon, the first simple with short duration for gen type 1 and 4. 
With wave two, we have Arvani that was approved on October 2014. This is the first uh, interferon and ribavirin free regimen for genotype one. We are currently working on a, a wave three and wave four. In wave three, we are specifically looking on pangenotypic STR signal tablet regimen and the combination of sofosovir, the nucleotide inhibitor, and a pangenotypic um, GS5 at 16. And this is uh, specifically, you know, have interest for um, countries that do not have the um, genotyping assay available. In wave four, we are looking on a pangenotypic STR with short-term treatment duration and combination of uh, sofosovir, um, the 5 at 16, and our uh, um, protease inhibitor pangenotypic 9857. And this is the HCV ro ro uh, robust pipeline of DAA. At the beginning, this slide actually also included the phase one and phase uh, two studies. Uh, but right, right now, we have a few approved uh, drugs. Uh, we just mentioned the telapovir and the posepovir, the first generation uh, protease inhibitors. Telapovir is discontinued at the end of uh, 2014, and posepovir to be discontinued, and these two have uh, um, severe side effects. Right now, we, uh, in addition to sofosovir and arvani, we also have the simepovir, which is a protease inhibitor. Um, and we have uh, Vicarapec, which is uh, also a combination treatment for uh, patients with uh, genotype 1. In phase 3 studies, we have uh, other combination uh, treatments that uh, target a uh, special population and non-genotype uh, 1. And I would uh, end with the acknowledgement for the patients, investigators, mm -hmm. and all the Gilead uh, teams that help to uh, uh, get this data and uh, do the analysis. Thank you. So uh, what is the rationale to set up the cutoff for the deep sequencing? Why it is 1% uh, instead of like 2% or 0.5%? So, um, you know, how so, do you set it up? So originally, uh, in our first studies, we just used population sequencing. The detection of population sequencing is between 15 to 20%. Um, and then the new generation deep sequencing was available. So we used that uh, deep sequencing. But even with deep sequencing, we did analysis with 1% cutoff and we did analysis with 15% cutoff to uh, be more similar to the, population, to the population sequencing. I can say that the data is very similar. We did not see uh, major differences between 1% and 15% um, cutoffs. So I have a question over here, uh, right here. That is you. You can okay. see it. <laughs> it's just from the sky. Uh, so it, I thought it was interesting that the, both the sofosphere alone and with the lodiposphere, you're not finding much in the way of mutations in NS5B, even in your virological failure. So what's going on there? Have you measured drug levels? Are these people not taking the drugs? You're just sort of taking suboptimal doses? Or is there something else going on? How do you explain that? So. Um um, NS5A is more polymorphic than the NS5B, so fossil will target the active side. The active side is more conserved between the genotypes. Mm -hmm. um, um, and also, um, so fossil will has high barrier to resistance. We don't see lots of uh, variants in vitro and uh, in vivo. When you combine these two together, you, you don't see too much from the, um, for um, resistance for so fossil will because the very good combination and high potency. Mm -hmm. NS5A is more, um, the deepest wheel is more potent than sofosvivir, but it has resistance. In monotherapy, you see lots of variants that come up. So it's just lower potency of the sofosphere is why these people are failing, you think? Or why, why are they getting failure without uh, well, resistance? Well, you know that in a, we cannot treat the, the patients with monotherapy. We need combination. So these two combinations, if, you, if you treat with, we, tr we treated with uh, sofosbuvir monotherapy and the success rate was 60%. So patients also fail. So we, and um, you obviously cannot treat with NS5A monotherapy as well. You need the combination. 
this combination is um, very potent in also in our drug-drug interaction, we saw that they uh, actually, NS5, the ledipasvir increased the exposure of sofosvir in patients. So this combination is very potent. Um, okay. That's the reason. Finding in previous animal or in vitro studies? Sorry, repeat the mutation, please. Uh, the AR159F mutation, which was discovered in the clinical trial when, we, when you guys use ASOF. So, what's the question? If, we, if, yeah, we, if it I want, I'm yes. just curious to know if this mutation was happened in the animal study no. or research? So, that's, so as studies. I mentioned, um, uh, in our in vitro uh, selection studies with sofosvir, which uh, go through uh, which uh, we did for a month. We did not observe uh, this mutation in vitro. We just saw it in, uh, in patients when we conducted the studies in virologic failure. So the first time we observed it, when we had the population sequencing, we observed it in uh, six patients that had virologic failure out of close to 2,000 uh, patients. And then because of that, we started with the deep sequencing analysis. Maybe there are more virologic failures that has these mutations and we did not detect it. And we tried to find the association with this mutation also at baseline. If patient has this mutation at baseline and do we see any effect on treatment response? Um, and actually, in genotype 1, this is considered cons conserved site. In genotype 1b, there are uh, at least 10% of the population that have L159F at baseline. But even with that, we did not see any effect on the treatment response. So, um, first of all, it's not that there is a discrepancy between uh, uh, in vitro and in vivo. Usually, we see a high correlation between in vitro and in vivo. However, because of sofosovir, the level of resist resistance that we see, like, for example, S282 was observed uh, in vitro, we see only tenfold resistance uh, in vitro. Um, and compared to NS5A variants, we see uh, more than 100 fold resistance. We see high level of resistance. Um, and, and the compliance uh, issue. Um, so if patients are non compliant, so they may be excluded from the efficacy analysis. However, for the virologic, uh, virology purpose, we do um, analyze them, look at sequencing before and after. Instead of a, a single cocktail, or that might be part of a, a, a regimen as well, I'm interested in the notion of sequential application of these drugs. I noticed, I think you mentioned uh, interferon may play a special role in knocking out some later variants and so on. I'm not talking about interferon as such, but just the whole idea from the viral life cycle and their development of new variants of is there a role for saying we have our cocktail that does the mainline job, and then another drug or drugs that are especially good at knocking out anticipated variants. So a patient is not exposed to this single cocktail, maybe complex items and so on throughout, but rather we understand the problem arises for those who are drug, become drug resistant by viral evolution, have another uh, drug that is not part of the original cocktail. So, um, so that's the purpose of, you know, doing this uh, cocktail. You know, one drug can cover a, a different class variant. So, sofosovir will cover the NS5A variants, NS5A inhibitors will cover the NS5B variants. If we have, for example, uh, patients that uh, fail, uh, sofosvir and the uh, ledipasvir and potentially have uh, drug resistance to um, both, then we need to think about different class of uh, regimen. Then we can treat with uh, um, protease inhibitors or a uh, more potent um, uh, NS5A inhibitors or addition of uh, ribavirin. So 
we are, we are looking on different uh, options. I have a very general question. <laughs> this, having a sophosphobe is a blessing, of course, and everybody has failed. What is so special about the Why does it have such a high SVR? Is it something about the biochemistry? If it interaction with the polymerase, is it the pharmacokinetics, pharmacokinetics, or anything? What do, what do you know? Um, why yeah, does it, why a, is it so good? That's the million. I think if uh, no, someone will really know the answer, <laughs> we, it w we wouldn't have this uh, bug. Um, so. Um, so first of all, it's very unique. It uh, is a, a, you, as you would in a, a backbone. Um, it um, converted uh, in the cells to the uh, three phosphate, and then it uh, potentially uh, binds to the RNA and um, serve as t terminate um, the elongation. Um, we don't see too much resistance. Mm -hmm. I mean, very potent, very um, no resistance. And in combination with the NS5A inhibitor in patients, it's significantly potent. Okay. Do you think one can use now the scaffold of the phosphorus to make compounds against other RNA-dependent RNA polymerases? Um, in other that can be that can be tried. I mean, it's it's a nucleotide inhibitor. It's it's potentially a inhibitor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I think yeah, we should go on. Thank you very much.